I, I wish to wish to thank both the uh, past chair and the uh, future chair for this these brilliant introductions to a subject that is of great interest to all of you. Because let's, I think we need to be honest that uh, you have all been disappointed in what the GMG to date has been able to accomplish. We all, I think we all recognize that. And I recall one of the first things that happened after I came to town was that a small group of the GMG got together and we had a retreat in nearby Annecy and we all talked about reforms. And in fact, it has taken us until the chairmanship of the regional commissions to get anything at all uh, underway on that. And I think with the, with the arrival now of uh, the ILO in the chair for a full year with a one-year agenda and with the wind in our sails from, from the inspiration of these two remarks here that we, we perhaps can finally move into uh, a higher gear, if you will, to produce some practical results that you had hoped you would see from this organization of 16 agencies, which is quite remarkable if you think about it. If we now, as 16 agencies, can set aside uh, a little more time for the GMG work, which is partly missing up to now, and move it ahead. So I think without further ado, we've got about, uh, we have up to 45 minutes if we need it for discussion. I'd like to open the floor uh, for comments, questions, uh, critiques, uh, comments. What, what, would, uh, what would you like to say on the subject now? It's something that's concerned you for a long time. Floor is open. The United States comes to our rescue. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Director General. And I want to start by thanking uh, the GMG Troika, as well as the earlier presentation by Special Representative Sutherland. The United States supported the establishment of the GMG, and we believe that as member states and as members of the executive boards and agencies, which make up the GMG, we also have a responsibility to improve the GMG. Although the changes recommended by the members in July 2013 address some of the structural def deficiencies uh, in the GMG, we remain concerned that it lacks continuity, consistency, practicality, and expertise. For example, we have not seen practical results from the GMG in the field and in country missions. Given these concerns, the U.S. has recommended naming IOM as the permanent co-chair of the GMG. While we recognize other members, including the incoming chair, ILO, have mandates and expertise related to specific areas of migration, such as labor migration, trafficking in persons, and refugee movements, IOM is the sole international entity with a mandate focused exclusively on migration. We believe the breadth of IOM's expertise in migration would complement the depth of ex expertise in organizations with more focused migration mandates, and that as a permanent co-chair, IOM would bring much needed consistency and practicality to the GMG. So my question is, what do the members of the panel think of this? Thank you. Do I see other speakers? Uh, Ah, Uruguay, you, you have the floor. Panama. Muchísimas gracias, señor director general, y muchísimas gracias también a los eh, panelistas por su presentación. Evidentemente, quizás la pregunta eh, mía sea la misma que la de Estados Unidos. Queremos eh, oír más de los resultados prácticos y agradecemos al, al GMG el haber presentado insumos conjuntamente, por cierto, al, al este, diálogo de alto nivel porque ello fortaleció eh, los mensajes políticos y quizás eh, ayudó eh, a, ese, a ese consenso intergubernamental en la Asamblea General de Naciones Unidas. Eh, entonces quisiera conocer un poco más, eh, ya que es un misterio el GMG, como nos decía el director Swim, eh, cuál es el reparto de, 
de competencias porque, como dijeron, el tema migraciones es intersectorial y es complejo. Entonces, por ejemplo, el aspecto de trata de personas puede ser visto desde el punto de vista laboral, desde el punto de vista de derechos humanos. Entonces, ¿cuál es la agencia que va a tener el liderazgo en cada uno de esos temas? Y si ya tienen algunas eh, ideas o proyectos de, eh, de resultados concretos o de trabajos concretos que quieren... Eh, empujar como agencias de Naciones Unidas o, o agencias internacionales eh, en los países o, o bueno, promoverlo en el ámbito multilateral. Eh, sé que la, la OIM tiene proyectos específicos sobre eh, un código de ética para empresas eh, que contratan personas, este, no, no, sé, no sé qué otro tipo de proyectos eh, se puedan impulsar, ya sea como organizaciones en sí mismas o como o desde el GMG eh, unificadamente. Muchas gracias. I now give the floor to Canada. Thank you, Chair. The uh, HLD exceeded our, our expectations in presenting a consensus of uh, member states in the international community. And we actually like to thank ICMC for the very useful matrix that they have done to, to present that. The follow-up will be, will be centrally important. And I guess uh, what we see is a bunch of still rather disparate mandates uh, institutionally. Uh, the human rights of migrants was a theme that was uh, particularly emphasized in the outcomes. So the, the treaty bodies, the human rights bodies, will have a role in, in, uh, in furthering that agenda. We have the GFMD, which many have complimented here, and, and, and we too regard as a, as a centrally important body in providing a forum uh, for intergovernmental perspectives. The GMG representing, represented here, key for international coherence, including the IOM with a, a very broad mandate and uh, those agencies having deeper, more specialized agencies uh, or mandates in, with respect to migration. The only mandate that has been provided for international coherence amongst all of those entities uh, was a comment delivered by the Secretary General asking the SRSG to coordinate between the GFMD and the GMG which uh, strikes us as a very informal um, uh, mandate and puts a lot of emphasis in the special representative uh, to present this coherence. What, is this, is this uh, a sufficient way forward? What else might be necessary to uh, buttress the coherence amongst the different uh, entities? Um, we too have gone out publicly in support of the IOM providing continuity as a, as, as a, as a co-chair. Uh, that may or may not be, be realistic, but there, there may be other ways in which uh, we can make sure that there is, is continuity and uh, a stronger drive towards coherence between these, uh, these different entities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have other speakers? If not, I would like to turn to the panel members for any comments they'd like to make on these uh, three interventions. Uh, who'd like to go first? Uh, I, sorry. Hi. I'm sorry. Apparently, I, apparently, I missed you in HCR. I, I didn't see what you. You have the floor. Thank you. And. UNHCR followed by UNDP and UNICEF, all members of the GMG. UNHCR. Well, thank you very much, Ambassador Swing. It's a great pleasure to be part of this discussion uh, here um, at your IOM Council and to also perhaps put forward a little bit the perspective of UNHCR, not least since we as you were saying, were one of the founding members of the Geneva Migration Group, which was the precursor to the Global Migration Group. I think clearly the partnership is a very core concept for us in anything that we do when it comes to forced displacement as well as, as migration issues. And I think we see huge value in that partnership through this group. 
and perhaps also in response to the Uruguayan ambassador, I think there are various themes on which we work together, perhaps not in this formalized institutional structure, but for instance on trafficking. UNHCR has been working very closely together with IOM. We have, for instance, a, a standard operating procedures between the two organizations, but also with UNICEF and UNODC. In other areas, we work very closely together with ILO, for example. So I think it depends a little bit on on the very complex issue of addressing the broader migration governance side. But then when it comes to very concrete issues, there are obviously different coalitions of organizations that try to address very concretely some of the challenges that we face. I would also like to thank Ambassador Swing and IOM for your extremely strong leadership in steering the GMG through the high-level dialogue, and we are very heartened to see in particular the emphasis that we have seen coming out of the dialogue on the human rights dimension, and in particular the protection dimension. Obviously, protection is very close to our heart, in particular because we have an existing and very strong legal framework on refugee protection, and I think it is one area that would, we would think could also inspire the migration governance side of things. I would also like to mention that in the context of mixed mig migratory movements, we have, as you know, this 10-point plan that tries to address refugee and mixed migration. We have been engaged, especially with IOM as a strong partner, in order to work out with countries to address very particular mixed migratory situations. I mean, we have just done this recently with Yemen. Uh, Yemen is at the center of a mixed migratory movement and has, has shown sterling leadership in trying to address it amidst a very complex environment. But at the same time, it must also be said that in the current context, we are not just talking about mixed flows, but also about refugee flows in many instances, just looking at Syria, looking at some of the global refugee groups that we have. And they are, in fact, if you like, part of migratory movements, but there is, but the, the reason why they leave is due to human rights abuses, to conflict and other types of predicaments that compel them to leave, so they don't have much of a choice but to actually go. And it is these same refugees that are also caught up, as we just saw in the tragedies in the Mediterranean, that are caught up in the um, is issue of rescue at sea and, and very complex issues of trying to cross often very troubled waters in unseaworthy boats, and we, as we just also saw in the Lampedusa incidents. I would like to share perhaps four observations uh, from our perspective, and I think they could perhaps also help in the advancing of our agenda in the years to come. Obviously, from a UNHCR perspective, we are very keen and interested in engaging in the discussions on the integration of migration and the importance and the positive side of migration and of migration rights in the post-2015 development agenda. And it also has implications for refugees. And I think it was interesting to hear the Director General of the ILO talk about the labor benefits, but when it comes to refugees, there is an issue of access to the labor market, there is an issue of labor mobility for refugees, there is the issue of recognition of qualifications and access to appropriate work because of the particular status that refugees have. So the portability of pensions and documents, as well as access to reduced costs for remittances for migrants, can equally benefit refugees, so we are very keen to pursue this and look forward to working with ILO in particular to find practical means of taking this further forward in the post-2015 agenda. The second point, the SRSG's initiative on migrants in crisis is an important one. In that, it tries to address an important gap that currently exists, and we are often confronted with that gap. We saw it in the Libya crisis, in the Libya emergency, where there were migrants in crisis and where IOM and UNHCR had to step up to find practical ways to resolve it. 
The other issue that is related to this is the overwhelming of asylum systems. Very often the overwhelming of asylum systems is also part, part of a structural problem because you, we do not have enough migration governance. So as a result, uh, people choose to move into the asylum system, albeit that they would not necessarily need to access that system. So the more we have migration governance, including in the in this area of migrants in crisis, the more we hope that the asylum system would be there for the ones who need to access it. The third point that I would like to make is in relation to partnerships and civil society. We have just heard from ICMC a very powerful presentation. I think we as a group need to work much more closely with civil society actors on all fronts to ensure that we benefit from their very important perspectives and expertise. And and I think that's a very important way to structure perhaps our work in the future. And the fourth, the fifth, the fourth point, sorry, and that's the last one. I think when it comes to the refugee component in mixed migratory movements, it's clear that the emphasis on human rights is an important one. I think in the same context, it's also key to emphasize the very specific legal nature and responsibilities that we have when it comes, and that's the normative element that was mentioned by the Director General of ILO, when it comes to according a very specific status to stateless people and to refugees. And it's important to bear that in mind as we move forward on this. Thank you very much. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Uh, may I call on the distinguished uh, delegate of the UNDP? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Director General. I spoke earlier this morning, so I'll be very brief now. But I'd like to think, uh, thank the IOM and the member states for actually giving such a prominent space uh, to the Global Migration Group in this uh, forum. I think it's very important, as you said. And um, uh, you know that UNDP is, is um, one of the members of, of the GMG. And as such, I think what we normally do stress and emphasize is the importance, the positive aspect that migration has on development. And in view of the dis previous discussion here, I think it's important to try to even pro provide more evidence in this respect. Uh, the fourth uh, point that I would like to make here is that we also agree that migration uh, has multidimensional aspects. So we have to look at it from a rights perspective, we have to look at it from a development uh, pr perspective, and also from a social protection uh, perspective. So that is then also uh, why the GMG group is so important. And listening to the previous speaker too, I think, and I, I emphasized that before too, working closely with civil society and with all partners on the ground is tremendously important. And as the U US delegate said, we had seen very little results on the ground. Um, sorry to hear that. I have worked previously at country level in Cape Verde, where the UN country team actually worked together with, uh, with IOM very closely. IOM formed part of the UN country team where we tried to issue, um, to address the issues of migration. And, and last, I'd like to say that uh, we look forward to working with ILO during, the next, uh, during next year, and of course also very closely with IOM to ensure that the results of the GMG group are, are more evident. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another colleague of GMG, UNICEF. I think I saw your flag up. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador Zwing, many thanks for this opportunity also to contribute to such a critical discussion. And as many of my colleagues from the UN have mentioned, this is really a very unique opportunity for the GMG also to implement the recommendations made to be open and to be also able to have this dialogue with, with member states. Uh, three points. Maybe first I will start as, as a response also to some of the questions that UNICEF also, as I mentioned two days ago, when 
we thank also this council for uh, for letting UNICEF join as an observer the Council of IOM. I mentioned the excellent co collaboration we enjoy with IOM, and it is both at the global level on all the issues related to child protection mechanism and unaccompanied uh, children of migrants and separate children, but most particularly at the field level. This is really a critical era, as others have mentioned, and we enjoy this strong collaboration in development discussions for the issues of mainstreaming migration, but also in the humanitarian crisis, when we know the needs are so acute for children in uh, pre-crisis preparedness, emergency response, and also post-crisis recovery. Uh, coming to the uh, GMG specific discussion, we would like really to congratulate IOM for its very active chairmanship of the Global Migration Group. We are fully committed to supporting the GMG chair and the Troika in following up on the decision and outcomes of the second UNHLD high-level dialogue on international migration and development, which was referred to several times today, in particular on the inclusion of migration in the post-2015 development agenda. UNICEF also welcomes the leadership shown by the SRSG on international migration and development, Mr. Peter Sutherland, that we heard also this morning, in advocating for the inclusion of migration in the post-2015 development agenda as well as the support of the IOM GMG chair to the informal working group led by the SRSG. At the HLED, the SG requested the GMG to collaborate more closely with the GFMD and improve coordination at the field level. We trust also and we welcome the new ILO chair that it will take this forward in 2014 with IOM as part of the GMG Troika. UNICEF is very supportive of the field engagement and the initiatives at country level by the GMG. UNICEF also welcomes the commitment by member states, civil society partners and the U.S. system to protect the human rights of all migrants and their families as an, as an important outcome of the HLD. The focus on the particular needs of groups such as children, adolescents, youth and women is notable. And I was also particularly pleased to hear this morning Mr. Ian Elanson specifically referring to children and adolescents when looking at the most vulnerable groups. To put this commitment into practice, the international community will need to focus on guaranteeing all the rights enshrined in the Convention on the Rights of the Child to all children in the context of migration in countries of origin, transit and destination, including children left behind in countries of origin and children born to migrant parents at destination. This will involve guaranteeing equitable access to services such as health care, education, housing and social protection, regardless of status, a stress in the UN Secretary General eight point agenda for action. We think also that the HLD follow-up process should need to be embedded in the UN policy-making structure, such as the SG Policy Committee, the HLCP, CB, the UNDG, and the Executive Committee for Humanitarian Affairs. This will encourage ownership and will contribute to policy positionings and developing a consensus, which, as we mentioned earlier, are also very important for more effective advocacy. Finally, a few points on the post-2015 development agenda. We believe, UNICEF believes that we should leave no one behind and have equity and inclusion at the core of the 2015 development agenda. When discussing migration, we should think of the development first and foremost as the human development of migrants and their families. Migrants are active subjects of their own development, in addition to contributing to the development of the communities they join and live. Migration can only make a positive contribution to development if the human rights of migrants and their families are protected, respected and fulfilled. It is also essential that we move beyond protection issues to address the social dimensions of migration, such as policies to tackle poverty, social exclusion, discrimination and xenophobia. Population, finally, population dynamics, globalization, and environmental change are transforming the patterns of human mobility, and we heard this also today. 
it is thus crucial for us to be forward-looking, think about the next generation and invest on issues that are only likely to grow on importance in the coming decades, such as child, adolescent and youth migration. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see the flag. Um, I think John Bingham of ICMC, uh, you have the floor. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Chair, to take the floor. I have no prepared um, a statement, just a, a question, uh, perhaps even a, just a piece of a reply. Uh, thank you very much to you and, and to the incoming Chair of the GMG for the outreach to, to civil society uh, to participate with the GMG. I, I, I think we can say on behalf of civil society partners here and, and, and abroad um, that we're happy to take up that invitation as long as it's uh, practical. Uh, to member agencies as well as, as civil society. But to ask maybe a, a question or, or two, maybe provocative question coming right out of a lot of the civil society discussions in preparation for the high-level dialogue that touched on questions of uh, global governance and, and this GMG. Um, so our understanding of, of the GMG has, has come from its, its history First, with the Geneva Migration Group, as you said, uh, Chair, uh, the, you know the six members are so broadening out to to the 16, and maybe now uh, going one more to 17, uh, as you say. And um, we, we've been following most closely uh, the thinking of of, uh, of our, the agencies, so many of of whom we work with on the ground in real partnerships, but the thinking to move to multi-year planning. You know, really a, a, a dynamic reform, uh, if it can work, uh, one that we're trying um, also in a dynamic reform with our own five-year eight-point plan. But here's, here's a little bit of the worry uh, with respect perhaps to the size of the GMG and its, uh, its, its efforts these past um, years. You know, um, multi-year planning can be good and it also can be slow. And group work can be, um, you can add something, and it also can, can uh, slow things down as well. We know that in civil society. So when the, when the U.S. and others um, suggest um, IOM is more of a permanent co-chair or some other kind of structural um, reform, it's worth, it's worth asking whether, whether when we look at the whole size of the GMG, if uh, 16 or 17 or 18 or many more might be um, might be a difficulty. So the question we have as civil society is uh, beyond communication and cooperation. Uh, the question of where in the GMG there's a, a waiting, you know, measuring of, of uh, felt urgency on issues of migrants and migration, um, and where there's a proper measuring of capacity. And we think that th those kind of questions are so important uh, to consider the proposal that the U.S. and others have put forward. Um, we certainly considered um, the idea of co-chairs, of, of, of civil society doing some thinking and recommendations on co-chair type structures for the GMG. Frankly, we, uh, as a broad movement, uh, didn't know enough about the GMG to make any any solid recommendation but so the final the, the questions in there is 16 or 17 members is that just too big a size and lastly is the gmg is that the road to, to better governance of migration is is it if it's a road is it the way to move fast enough on it given these urgencies that we seem to have so much convergence on curious what the chairs and others might might have to suggest on that. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, those questions. Uh, we'll come back to those in just a minute. Um, I see the flag of the distinguished delegate of Egypt. You have the floor now. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think we've listened to the uh, lively debate, which we followed very um, accurately today. Um, uh, we now know uh, better, uh, better, we now have a better understanding of the dynamics and synergies between the GMG and uh, the GFMD. And the question that we have right now is how can we have a key 
permanent role in the IOM as the main body uh, entrusted with the task of migration in the GMG. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think those are very, very useful uh, statements by everyone. I think I'd like now to turn to our panelists uh, to any reactions that they might like to have. Uh, okay. Please. Um, <clears throat> a number of very specific issues have been raised, which are important. I think that there is a, a, um, an expression used in, uh, U in U.S. football uh, about receiving a hospital pass. Um, well, uh, the U.S. representative, distinguished representative, delivered a hospital pass to me, which uh, I'm going to decline. Um, I, w I think I must admit that prudence and caution in responses to questions has not always been a characteristic that I can claim. But in this particular case, <clears throat> I am going to um, avail of it. Uh, as the special representative, I think it would be inappropriate for me to enter into the debate uh, at this stage in regard regarding IOM's role uh, as a permanent co-chair or otherwise of the GMG, <clears throat> because I know it is a matter of some debate within the UN itself, and it's not for me to define an answer to it. I do, of course, greatly uh, appreciate the role of, of IOM, which has been consistent and important, and I've already referred to it. But I do want to address <clears throat> the more general issues that have been raised about the GMG. <clears throat> From the beginning, the GMG <clears throat> was seen as an important element in bringing together the various agencies of the UN to make the UN a more effective contributor to the policies, debate, and actions of the global community on migration. <clears throat> but I would be less than candid uh, <clears throat> to, if I were to fail to admit that the GMG has not been an unambiguous success as a collective. I'll refer later to some views that I have as to why this might be the case. <clears throat> Individually, I should first of all say, members of the GMG have been of enormous help in the debate on migration, both on the ground, UNHCR, IOM itself, and many others have contributed greatly, and indeed have worked well together in individual cases. <clears throat> and they continue in the debate to play a role in identifying and finding solutions to issues and contributing intellectually to the debate. The World Bank, DESA, Mary, various others have made intellectual contributions that are important. <clears throat> but why has the GMG as a group not been quite as effective as might have been hoped. Well, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what did we hope for? Did we define what we wanted from the GMG? Could we define more specifically what the GMG as a group should be doing? I think that there's a legitimate question to be asked there. Part of the failure, I think, is to do with a lack of mature reflection on the contribution that the GMG should be making. Are we thinking of it in terms of personal personnel allocation within the membership? If it itself doesn't analyze how collective discussions and contributions can help the migration debate, it also has failed to take the first step towards making those contributions. <clears throat> Multi-year planning is fine and it's important. Consistency in leadership is also fine 
and extremely important. But I think it has to be within a framework. In other words, these indispensable tools in practical process terms must supplement a definition of where the GMG can help. We know how the individual institutions could and should and do help, but working together. I have great sympathy also for the view <coughs> that the membership of the GMG should be focused upon those who have as a central component of their role a function relating to, 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 to uh, migration. It's a sort of a general rule of the UN that if there's a committee or a body, everybody wants to be on it. That is as true of the members as it is of the GMG. Nobody wants to be off a committee. They all want to be on it, even if they sit there and do nothing, say nothing, and contribute nothing. Now, I'm not saying that there are members of the GMG who are doing nothing, saying nothing, or contributing nothing. But it should be a group that is focused on practical action within a defined mandate that it itself, I keep coming back to this, initially helps us to define, helps us to understand why and how they could work better together to help us, both in the GFMD and more generally in the debate. And I think, I think that that is, 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 is very, very important. I think <clears throat> internal organization within the constituent parts of the key elements of the uh, GMG is also important. And what I mean by that is we don't expect and cannot expect the uh, directors general or secretaries general to play the constant negotiating role and en engagement in the GMG. <clears throat> But I think we can legitimately demand that in each of the organizations that claims to have an interest and wishes to be involved in the GMG, that they delegate at least a serious and important figure within their organization to play the role of the coordination, somebody who can deliver the organization and their own secretary general and who is in a position of real power and authority. Simply having somebody there, in effect, taking notes is not good enough. So I think that we're dealing here with issues of process and definition of role and so on that perhaps we have to re-examine ab initio, not by having a huge task force or report because this should be simple enough if you have the right people sitting around the table to say, well, this is what we can do, and these are the things we can't do. These are the things the organizations themselves should be doing. But sitting around a table with each one banging the table, if I may say so without being pejorative, saying, look, human rights and the normative side is the only thing that counts, or uh, remittances is the only thing that counts, or that something else is the only thing that counts, simply doesn't work. It won't work. And it's the old, I'm afraid, failing that often arises in the UN of, you know, advancing your own book. And we're not into our own book on this thing. That's the whole purpose of a collective working team reaction. I conclude by saying that I've no doubt about the goodwill and the genuine aspiration of the leadership of the GMG. The Secretary General has exhorted them, I've heard them exhort themselves, and everybody in the GMG is concerned to make it work. So I don't believe it's a lack of will, but perhaps rolling up to the odd meeting isn't enough. We have to have a little bit of preliminary thinking and leadership. And if I'm given a hospital pass by the, by the United States, I'll pass on a hospital pass to the Director General of the ILO. And there's no more deserving recipient, <laughs> particularly having regards to the part of the world where she comes from, which is good at hospital passing. <laughs>
Over to you, Guy. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm in the fortunate position to be able to pass on the hospital pass to my neighbour who's going to be uh, next. I, I, you know, uh, the special representative has very skillfully um, discussed, and I think, you know, I, I have to not only defer to his experience uh, in the area, which is a great deal greater than mine, uh, but also underline, I, I, I think, the, the importance of the issues which, which he has responded to uh, and the importance of the interventions uh, from a number of the um, partner organisations of, 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 of the GMG. I have to say, listening to the interventions from the floor, uh, you know, it is rather encouraging. And yet, to hear the commitment of these different organisations, the depth of knowledge, the depth of commitment uh, to work on migration. Are they disparate mandates? I don't know, as Canada described them. They're certainly mandates uh, which are all relevant to migration issues. And the challenge of the GMG is, is to make them complementary and to make them coherent. Uh, and I uh, 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 am certainly one of those who feels that trying to coordinate, trying to you know, uh, get 16 or 17 different organizations uh, to come together in a single endeavor, uh, which works well, which works effectively, uh, is, is an extraordinarily big challenge. Uh, and I've listened carefully, as I say, as a newcomer to this arena, to the expressions of disappointment, the recognition, which I think are widely shared, that up until this point, we probably haven't done as well as the organizations themselves would like to do, and we haven't responded to the entirely legitimate uh, demands of member states to perform optimally in addressing migration issues. The question which arose in my mind listening to the discussion uh, today, both from the floor and the response of the special representative, is, well, you know, where do the problems lie? Is there an original sin, as it were, a design defect in the manner in which the GMG has been constituted? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. What I do know is that efforts have been made as recently as July in the principals meeting to address the working methods of the GMG, to try to bring about uh, greater coherence through adjusting the modalities through which it works. And it's quite possible that further uh, modifications need to be made. I have an open mind in that regard. Um, uh, but I think it is absolutely a part uh, of the duties of the GMG to consistently uh, review the way it works and to see what does need to be done to deliver. Uh, we should be subject, I think, to the most rigorous disciplines in that regard. There is, of course, a sort of a law of institutions which says that um, you know, the results that you get from a meeting are in inverse proportion to the number of people sitting around the table. I, I mean, I've, I've been there and I know that that can be the case. And yet, you don't want to exclude people from the room who've got something to offer. So there's a real dilemma to that. And I, I sort of take, uh, take the, the lead from my neighbour uh, who says, well, now, if you're going to be at the, at the table, bring something along and play a role. Uh, play a role. No, there's got to be a sort of a threshold there uh, if we're going to work uh, effectively. Now, the longer I go on, the more effectively I avoid that hospital pass, but I don't think I'm going to go on any longer. I'll, I'll leave it at, at, at that. But the thoughts that are coming from the room are clearly thoughts that we're going to have to take on board, be it in the GMG, be it with our work with the Global Forum, be it with the, the relationship with the special representative. And, and from my part, at least, I think these are very, very important questions that we need to, uh, to get deeper into. You know, and without getting too, we've got to get over ourselves as well to a certain extent. You know, this should not be institutions um, bringing their own book and promoting their own book, as Peter Sutherland has said. We, we should absolutely be resistant to that type of behaviour. I'll just add a couple of words because a lot of has been said. I think uh, what we heard from member states here in the panel and also from uh, the uh, uh, speakers, previous speakers, I think it's a big challenge before our colleague, Director General for ILO, to tackle this matter because uh, the remarks said here, mentioned here, will have resonate, will resonate 
in the future work and will be taken very well serious. Uh, me, who is representing uh, five regional commissions, we heard the message. We will do through our work, not only in, uh, in the work of M GMG, but also through our work together with member states to contribute to this very important issue. I think through intergovernmental bodies and direct work on the, on, uh, the ground, I think uh, we can uh, contribute to this, uh, this important work and make GMG more efficient. I think we can coordinate and uh, put our uh, expertise uh, together, and I think each of the current member of uh, GMG has its role to play. How big this is role depends where we are and uh, tackling the issue and how we are going to go about. Of course, it needs uh, work to be done, and I would emphasize one from the point of uh, uh, regional commissions a very important linkage between development and migration, because we are all uh, before anything economic commissions to, to work more for bring up development of the countries we are working. So merging these two, putting uh, two, two together, development and migration, I think we can make more efficient the work of GMG, but also the migration issue very much uh, on, on the agenda. Thank you. I think it uh, leaves uh, is it up to me only to express thanks uh, in your behalf for this excellent panel of really very distinguished uh, colleagues. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, in particular uh, Peter Sutherland for taking on two panels today. I thank you very much for that. Uh, and I want to thank uh, also the Director General of the International Labor Organization, Mr. Guy Ryder, and the Executive Secretary of the Economic uh, Commission for Europe of the UN, Sven Akalaj, all three of you for the time you've given us and for the insights you've shared with us. And we're looking forward to working closely with you all uh, during the presidency and the, the chairmanship of ILO for this coming year. So thank you very much. And please, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. We actually finished on time. <laughs> <laughs>